Hello friends, I want to personally welcome you to Christ Church How, a church dedicated to worshiping God, empowering people, and reaching the world. As I share biblical truths in a practical and relevant manner, I pray today's message will not only encourage you, but also give you the tools to live a joyful and prosperous life. Now let's dive into the Word of God together. This morning I'd like for us to continue our theme of Reach One. As I share with you from the thought, the power to reach one. I could do that. I could tell one person about Jesus. But wait, what if they laugh at me? What if they reject me? What if they shut me out? What if they look at me differently? What if I ridicule? Or what if I'm ridiculed? Or even worse, what if I offend them? No. I can't do that. I can't tell somebody about Jesus. But wait. What if they really want to know? What if they didn't laugh at you? What if they didn't reject you? What if they let you into their life? What if they listened to you as you told them about God's love? What if they heard what you were saying and prayed and asked Jesus to come into their life? You see, his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love, it never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy. And his burden is light. See, he is indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He, he's irresistible. The heavens cannot contain him, let alone a man try to explain him. Yet, you can't get him out of your mind, and you can't get him off of your hands. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. The Pharisees, they couldn't stand him. But they also found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. The witnesses at his trial couldn't get their testimonies to agree. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him. And the grave, it couldn't hold him. So, Father, today, our prayer is, is that you would come and fill this house with your presence. Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this place. We welcome you. Do only what you can do. We have tried on our own for far too long. We've tried to change things, change circumstances, change people, and at times, God, we've even tried to change your mind. But today, we lay all of that aside. We sit in your presence. We lay it all aside. As Paul said, I counted it as all trash for the surpassing knowledge of knowing Jesus. So I lay aside every weight and every care, every burden, every sickness, every bill, every disagreement, every conflict, Every worry, every care, I lay it to the side this morning so we could sit at your feet. Blow in this place, Holy Spirit. Blow in the homes of every person watching on our live stream. Blow right now.
The Bible tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever should believe in him will not perish, but have eternal life. You see, God the Father sent his son, Jesus, into the world, and the son then sends the believers, you and me, and others around the world back into the world to declare the message of the kingdom. But he also sends us to demonstrate this message with power and with signs following. Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 3 says, Now after this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them in pairs ahead of him to every city where he was himself going to come. And he was saying to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Go, behold you, behold, I send you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. God's greatest desire is for those of us who have come to the knowledge of Christ to go back out into the world and see the world transformed through the power of Jesus' love and the power of the Holy Spirit. He cries out here in Luke chapter 10 saying the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few. This morning I want to share with you from the thought the power to reach one. Jesus understood that if the church was going to accomplish her mission to change the world, we would need to not only walk in the power of the Holy Spirit but to live in that power. Not only to walk in it but to live in it. And I submit to you one of the greatest obstacles of the church having power in this day and age is living in the power of the Spirit and developing a relationship with the Father, a relationship with Jesus, and of course, welcoming the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit is much more than just a force. He is God himself. And his main function is to glorify Jesus Christ and to convict the world of sin and to lead us back to the cross. Join me in your Bibles this morning in John chapter 14. The power to reach one. John's Gospel chapter 14. If you don't have your Bible with you this morning, don't worry. It will be up on the screens as well. John chapter 14 verses 15. Through 18. Jesus speaking here says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. The Greek word here for Holy Spirit is parakletos and is translated comforter four times, counselor once. The Holy Spirit has taken the place of Christ on the earth and will lead the body of Christ into a deeper knowledge of the gospel truth and give strength and power to those who will advance the kingdom of God. John chapter 14, verse 26, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. God sends his son Jesus into the world. Jesus then sends his church into the world, but not alone. He sends his church into the world with the power of the Holy Spirit to perform signs and wonders and to advance his kingdom. And as a result of that, my friend, we are not powerless, but we have been endued with power from on high to do what we could not do by ourselves. You see, every time you say to God, God, I can't do that, what we're doing is limiting God. I heard a man say it this way. He said, whether you believe you can or believe you can't, you're right. You see, if I believe that God can't use me, then I'm right. But if I believe that God can use me, I'm right as well. 
And oftentimes we're trying to move about in our world under the power of our own strength, under the power of our own thoughts and our own suggestions and wondering why we're not having victory in every area of our lives. But the truth is, my friend, you cannot live this Christian life apart from the Holy Spirit. You cannot do what God can do. Oftentimes we think, well, if I'll just try harder, if I'll pray longer, if I'll read my Bible more, maybe I'll go ahead online and get an online class somewhere and I'll understand the Word and, 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 and I'll have a better understanding of who God is. You see, when we're walking in this Christian life, it's not about us trying harder. It's about allowing the God that He has placed on the inside of each and every one of us to come forth and burst through our lives in order that we can operate underneath that power and no longer the power of the flesh. Jesus said it this way. He said, take my yoke upon you for my yoke is easy and my burden is life. Light. Oftentimes we're carrying things that God wants us to push off and let him carry. Sure, there are some things that you will have to carry. But Jesus said, if you'll cast your cares upon him, that he loves us and he cares for us and he'll carry that burden for you. And as a result of that, he sends his Holy Spirit. You see, you can't live this Christian life apart from the Holy Spirit. When someone runs you off the road or calls you out of your name, it's the Holy Spirit that helps you to not respond in a similar way. You see, that Holy Spirit on the inside of us is the thing that drives us towards Christ. It's the thing that's supposed to be producing change in our lives when we recognize that that power is present in our lives. But oftentimes, too many times, we, we try to hold on and we try to do it ourselves. I don't know about you, but I've given up on trying to change myself. If I could have changed myself, I would have done it a long time ago. Just think about all the New Year's resolutions that you make every year. And how long do they last? Oh, I'm going to eat better. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to wake up early and pray. I'm going to have quality family time. And, and, and we, we have good intentions. And, and, and we want to do the right thing. But Paul said it this way. He said, the things I want to do, I don't do. And the things that I don't want to do, I do. Who will deliver me from this body of flesh? Who will deliver me from this body of sin and the truth is is that God has sent his Holy Spirit into the world to empower you to embolden you in order that you could have a victorious life too often times people are, are holding on to things that are, we shouldn't hold on to Unfortunately, one of the problems in the modern day church is that we're getting a dose and a continual dose of, of encouraging words things like hold on don't let go Grab onto it. Your blessings come in your way. And, and I'll be honest with you, I, I, I don't particularly care for that preaching. I get it. We all need to be encouraged, but I don't want to just hang on. I, I don't want to just get the scraps from the master's table. Jesus has prepared a banquet table for me, and I don't want to just be one that's hanging on, holding on, waiting for heaven to come that I might be able to rejoice in him. Oh, my friend Jesus said, I would give you all things that pertain to life and this life and even godliness. He gives us everything that we need he gives us everything that we need that kind of preaches like cotton candy I like cotton candy my wife asked me one day she said honey you like cotton candy I said I like everything sweet including you you see I, I like sweet things but but cotton candy it, it's fluff right I, you, you remember how it's made right they just take sugar and they heat it up and it, it becomes big and then they they take the stick and they keep just layering it on and layering it on. And, and, and then, but as soon as you put something to it, a little bit of liquid, what happens? It shrivels right up. You can eat a whole great bunch of cotton candy and still be hungry. And that's what that sort of preaching has done to the body of Christ. It's made us hungry for truth and hungry for more while not satisfying us with the truth of God's word. I don't want to just hang on. I don't want to just hold on and wait for my blessing to one day come. God's called us to be victorious, my friend. Is it wrong to want to believe God for all of his word and to receive all of his word and all of his blessings? I don't want to just walk through this life looking to heaven in order that I might be blessed. 
blessed. I want God's blessing in my life now. I need God's victory now. I need God's deliverance now. I need to be able to walk in God's power now to see healing, to see deliverance and salvation come to the people that I love. I need that. You can't, you can't live this Christian life apart from the Holy Spirit. We've become so accustomed to, to the Holy Spirit just kind of going by our services and, and not really believing Him for healings and signs and wonders and miracles and His power. We've become so accustomed to it that now it's almost expected. It's almost expected. And whatever you believe, my friend, that's what will materialize in your life. When sin comes to tempt you, it's the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you that gives you the power to resist. Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father promised, which you have heard me speak about. Verse 5, for John baptized with water. But in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it's not for you to know the times or dates. The Father is set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Jesus gathers his disciples and tells them that as the Father sent the Son, the Father will also send the Holy Spirit to, be, to enable the believer to live a in power as the Father sends the church into the world. The church was never meant to be irrelevant. It was never meant to be a social gathering only. You see, oftentimes the church has now become just a social gathering, a place where we can pick and choose the events that we want and a place where we can go and feel good about ourselves. But the church was never called to be that. It was supposed to be an army being sent forth into the world demonstrating the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the non-believers and to the entire world to the point that they get so hungry that they want more of it. That, that, that's what the church was supposed to be. The church was never meant to be irrelevant. It was never meant uh, uh, to, 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 be, to be written off as people that were narrow-minded or, or people that were, weren't going to be trusted. I got a problem with anger Christians. Can I say that in church? I think Christians should be the happiest people on earth. I really do. I really do. I think the Bible teaches it. I, I think the Bible teaches that as a believer, you should be the happiest person on earth. You should have so much joy and so much happiness in your life. But the truth is many of us are walking around like we've been baptized in pickle juice. Baptized in pickle juice. I mean, we're just miserable people. And I don't understand why. Listen, we're saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit and fire baptized. We're, we're, we're people that are called out of darkness and into the light and have a power residing on the inside of us to see transformation happen, not just in our own lives, but also in the lives of the world and the people that we love. We should be the happiest people on earth. You can't be an angry Christian. People running around, their faces are all angry. They're yelling at people, angry at people. They're mad at people. I don't care if you're white, black, uh, uh, you know, Asian, Hispanic, whatever it is. You shouldn't be angry. You shouldn't be angry. Jesus didn't say the, the anger of the Lord will be your strength. Remember that old The anger of the Lord will be your strength. No, it's the joy. The Bible says that it's the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Not the anger of this world will be your strength. The anger of this world will make you bitter and, and even more angry and hateful. We ought not to be that way as believers. We ought to be people that are filled with joy because we know that we have an eternal home. And while we're living on this earth, we don't have to wait till we get to heaven to rejoice and to celebrate. We can have that now. Why? Because Jesus has filled our lives with the power of the Holy Spirit that we can be victorious in everything we do. Can somebody say amen? We could be victorious. We could be victorious. 
God isn't looking for a church that's just a social club or, or self-help uh, messages that simply are preached in hopes that we become better versions of our old self. No, the Bible says when any man comes to Christ, he is a new creation and all things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. We are new people filled with his joy, filled with his power, being sent into the world to preach the gospel and to testify of God's goodness. To testify of his goodness. You see, God wants us to live that kind of a life. One that is filled with his power. One that is filled with authority. One that is filled with a demonstration of, of signs and wonders following. One that is filled where, by where our lives are, are looked at as examples. You see, that we're all preaching something. Do you realize that every day you wake up and you leave your home, you're preaching something? Sometimes it's being preached by the words that you say. But more often than not, it's being preached by the life that you live. The life that you live. And I'll tell you what, non-believers know that you shouldn't be doing certain things. They may not be believers, but I'll tell you what, you mess up. You say something that you shouldn't say. You do something that you shouldn't do. A non-believer will be the first one to correct you. You shouldn't be doing that. What do you mean I shouldn't be doing that? Christians don't do that. Are you a Christian? No. No, I'm not a believer, but I know enough to know that believers shouldn't be acting the way that you're acting. And you think, man, I'm, I'm condemned by, by, by this already. You see, our lives are preaching something. It's preaching something. The late Dr. A. W. Tozer, author and pastor, said this, if the Holy Spirit was withdrawn from the church today, 95% of what we would do would go on and no one would even know the difference. We've become used to just simply gathering together. We've become used to not seeing signs and wonders. We've been used to people coming in sick and leaving sick. People coming in depressed and leaving depressed. People coming in bound and leaving bound. We, we've become accustomed to that. And my friend, I want you to know that we ought not to go along with the world. Uh, uh, the, the great preacher Billy Sunday once said, any dead fish can swim downstream, but it takes a live fish to swim upstream. It's a, it's a live fish that'll buck the current and say, no longer am I satisfied with just a Christian life that's dull and boring and lifeless and powerless. I want to receive all that God has for me. I want to live this Christian life with joy and peace and happiness. But I also want to live it with power, power over the flesh, power over sin, power over the forces of darkness. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was sent into the world and lives in you to create in you a powerful life a powerful life it not ought to be a life that's simply mundane a life that simply uh, accommodates the world's problems we ought to be people filled with joy and power 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 Jesus said it himself he said you'll receive power after that the Holy Spirit comes on you and you're going to be a powerful witness for Christ what you say and how you live and, and how you manage your daily affairs, they're all speaking something. And this month we're talking about reaching one. But guess what? You, can, you don't have to do it by yourself. You can do it with the power of God on the inside of you. You say, well, I can't reach nobody for Jesus. I can't even believe that God did it for me. Listen, if God can do it for you, he can do it for anyone. He can do it for anyone. You, you don't realize, but you're a miracle. Yeah. We're all miracles. When I think about where I was at when I was 18 and Christ found me, I, I, was, I was in a bad place. I was doing drugs and I was running the streets and I, I was doing all sorts of things. And then Christ came and grabbed a hold of me and transformed me, not to make me a pastor, but to make me a follower of him, one that would pick up his cross daily and one that would hunger and thirst for righteousness. And that's what God wants to do in all of our lives. You're a miracle. If you think about where you were when Christ found you, my friend, and if you would have rejected him or he would have never tugged on your heart where you may have been today, but today you're filled with his joy. Today you're filled with his peace. Today you're filled with his power. And as a result of that, God wants to send you into the world, my friend, to pass along that power and to demonstrate that power in a broken and hurtful world that, that, that needs the gospel of Jesus Christ you see we have to reach somebody with this message we have to reach somebody with this power he didn't leave you powerless it'd be one thing if God said you know what figure it out figure it out 
sometimes we get in situations like that, right? We, we don't have the wisdom. We don't know what we're doing. We're just figuring it out, right? But Jesus said, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask. And it's God that will give it to him freely and without reproach. We, we don't have to figure it out. We, you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. You have God living on the inside of you. You do. You see, you, you, when you realize that, there are certain things that you will tolerate and other things that you say, I'm not doing that no more. Why? Because God's on the inside of you. His Holy Spirit and his power is living on the inside of you. Join me in your Bibles in Mark's Gospel, chapter 16. Holy Spirit was sent into the world and lives in you to create in you a powerful life, a life of hope, a life of promise, a life of power to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ with signs following. I don't know, man. I, I long for that church. When we open up the book of Acts, we see a church on fire. We see a church that's moving and shaking. I mean, to the point that people were being brought out in their stretchers on the street and all Peter had to do was walk by and his shadow would hit them and they would get up out of their stretchers and be perfectly healed. You say, well, that was for the old church. That was for the, the church in the book of Acts. Listen, we serve the same God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever and he's no respecter of persons and if God can do it for one, he can do it for another. He could do it for another. We just have to begin to trust them again and realize that the church was never supposed to be a dead fish floating downstream. We were always supposed to be that thing that it was in society that swam upstream in order that the power of God could be demonstrated in our world. Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, verses 15 through 20. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Mm, I love that. Preaching at the people, preaching at the trees, preaching at the fish, preaching it in the air. Preach. He, said, he said, I want you to preach the gospel to all creation. Verse 16, he who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved, but he who has disbelieved shall be condemned. Verse 17. As we read verse 17, I want you to, I want you to think about this passage Applying to you. These signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then, the Lord Jesus had spoken to them. He was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word by the signs that followed. It would be easy to sit back and say this happened because the church was young or perhaps the apostles had a special anointing upon them. But the truth is there's only one church and there's only one Holy Spirit. And we serve a God that is no respecter of person. If God did it in the past, he can do it again. If God used people to move in his great power once, God can do it again. He's just looking for the man or woman who says, here I am, God. Send me. You see, God did it before. It's called a proof text. God did it before. He said that those that went out and they believed that these signs would follow. Listen, I'm not following signs, but signs and wonders should be following the preaching of the word. And, and the preaching of, uh, of your life, the signs and wonders should be following. And that means that he gives you a power to go into a world that's hurting and broken, to preach the gospel, to lead others to Christ, to pray for the sick, to pray for deliverance, to see his power move. You say, oh, only the pastor can do that. My friend, the Bible doesn't say that only the pastor will go and preach with signs following. It says, he who believes. You see, not only are you a believer, but you have to be one that believes. And when you believe, you have faith to know that God is with you. And if he said it in his word, then it will happen. It will happen. It may not happen all the time, but it will happen because I'm going to have faith for it to believe God that it's going to happen. The very first time I prayed for somebody that was sick, I went to the hospital. I was a new believer. I was 18 years old. And guess what happened? That person died. 
You say, obviously, Pastor, you don't have a healing ministry. Right? Wouldn't that be the common sense? Right? Why? Because you know where your anointing is, where there's fruit. And so you would say, oh, man, that guy, that guy, he, he don't have a healing anointing on him. But I remember after kind of picking up my bootstraps and, and getting through that moment of time, I said, God, but you said it in your word. You didn't say that there was a special grace or anointing upon a person to do that. All you said is he's just got to believe. And so, so then I said, I'm going to go try it again. I'm going to go back again. I'm not, I'm not going to be moved by what I see or what I feel. I'm not going to be moved by whether a person rejects the gospel or not. I'm just going to preach it. And I'm just going to pray for the sick. And I'm going to pray for the bound. And I'm going to pray for people to speak in tongues. And I'm going to pray for people to have the, the power of God operate in their life. I'm just going to pray for people because, God, it's your job to, to confirm it with signs and, and wonders following. That's not my job. I can't heal anybody. I can't deliver anybody. All I can do is believe God and then know that he put the power of his Holy Spirit on the inside of me. And it's his job to confirm the word with signs following. And God wants to use each and every one of you, my friend. He wants to use you to be a carrier of his truth and his word and his power into a broken and hurting world in order to see that manifest. And it should happen often in the church. It should happen often. See, I, I, my prayer has been gone. Let, let, let your church once again rise up in power. Let it once again rise up in signs and wonders. That, that's been my prayer. That, that's been my cry. And I believe it's the cry and the prayer of God because we've been through this last year and a half where things have shut down and we've gotten so accustomed to just going to church and, and singing some songs and hearing a good message and then leaving. But what good is it to leave just as broken and depressed and, 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 and sick as you walked in the, the, the gospel has power we were, we were never meant to have a powerless gospel that we preach in a powerless life that we live we, we were never meant for that we, we're like fish out of water when we don't see the power of God moving in our lives and in the lives of the people that we love and in this church we're, we're a fish without water but I believe that this is a prophetic call back to the church a, a prophetic call back to God we will once again believe him for the gifts of the spirit and for signs and wonders and miracles and healing and deliverance and salvation where the church will once again rise up not just to be a social club but a mighty army of God going into the world to preach the gospel to every living creature with signs and wonderings following. Can you say amen somebody? The text says these signs shall follow them that believe. Not only am I a believer but I believe. Not only am I a believer, but I believe. I believe that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he did it for one, he'll do it for another because God doesn't like you any more than he likes me and somebody else. We think, oh, only the great preachers and the great teachers of our day, they're the only ones that can operate in that. Only the great signs and wonders are miracle workers. But God wants to use each and every one of us. All we have to do is believe and trust his word and walk in faith, and God can do it. But if you say, you know what, God, I I'm not interested. Guess what? It won't happen. It won't happen. If we have faith, we have to have faith to believe God. We need that faith for signs and wonders to follow his word. Well, God, I can't do it. God, I can't do it. I can't lead anybody to Jesus. I, 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 I can't go into the department store to school, my job. I, I, can't go, I can't go around the corner, walk him the door. I can't do that, God. And, uh, but, but the truth is you can because God's equipped you to do it. He's equipped you through the power of his Holy Spirit to live a remarkable life. It had been said about Charles Finney, who was a leader during the Second Great Awakening, that his sermons were chain lightning, flashing, conviction into the heart of the stoutest skeptic. Simple as a child in his utterance, he sometimes startled his hearers by his unique prayers. He could thunder the judgment of God upon sin with great liberty and power and then offer the mercy of the gospel with tenderness and tears. Without question, he was a prophetic voice to the 19th century America. His ministry consistently produced revivals even in areas considered hardened and unreceptive to the gospel. 
Finney's autobiography is filled with accounts of powerful manifestations of the Spirit. On one occasion when Finney was preaching in a schoolhouse, suddenly an awful somberness fell upon the assembly and the congregation fell from their seats crying for mercy. Finney said, if I had a sword in each hand, I could not have cut them down faster than they fell. I think the whole congregation was on their knees or prostrated in two minutes. The crying and weeping of the people was so loud that Finney's exhortation of Christ's mercy could not even be heard. Finney seemed so anointed with the Holy Spirit that people were often brought under conviction of sin just by looking at him. When holding meetings in Utica, New York, he visited a large factory. At the sight of him, one of the workers, and then another, and then another broke down and wept under a sense of their sin. And finally, so many were sobbing and weeping that the machinery had to be stopped while Finney pointed them to Christ. The Bible says God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. My prayer for you today is that you would walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. To live in you and to accomplish things that you couldn't do in your own flesh. You see, you couldn't have saved yourself. You couldn't have changed yourself the way Jesus has changed you. You don't have enough money. There's not enough money in the world to produce the kind of change that Christ has made in each and every one of our hearts. He comes through His great love and mercy for us. He's given us the power to overcome sin and sickness and disease through His Holy Spirit. And through that same Holy Spirit, He, he breathes upon us, upon us and He sends us into the world give a testimony of the changed life that we've all received. Every one of us. And if you've not received Christ in that changed life, I want you to pray with me right now. If you're watching my live stream, I want you to close your eyes and pray this prayer along with us that are here at the sanctuary and on campus. Pray this prayer. He'll change, he'll do for you what you could not do for yourself. And when Christ comes in, he'll fill you with the power of his Holy Spirit. So you can walk and live in that power. Say these words with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you right now. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I welcome you into my heart my Lord and my Savior in Jesus name now with every head bowed and every eye closed if you prayed that prayer today for the first time or to rededicate your life back to Jesus I want you to slip your hand up right where you are go ahead and slip your hand up right where you are God bless you if you prayed that prayer online I want you to follow the instructions on your screen somebody there to pray with you. But I want to pray for each and every one of us today to be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit and to walk in His power. If you're here today and you say, you know what, I, I, I want to walk in that power. I want to live in that power of the Holy Spirit, that victory over the flesh. I want to walk and live in that power and have victory over sin. I want to walk and live in that power to see signs and wonders, healing, deliverance, breakthrough occur in the lives of the people that I love. I want you to stand with me right now. And we're going to pray together and trust that the Holy Spirit is going to breathe upon us. And He's going to fill us afresh and touch us anew. And He's going to pour out His power and presence in our lives and reignite a fire in us to believe God for not just some of His Word but for all of His Word. For all of it all of his word Father I pray for those of your people that are here today and those that are watching my stream 
I pray that your spirit would fall upon this place, fall upon our lives. Let us no longer be content with living lives that are void of power, but lives that are filled with your power to see signs and wonders and miracles occur, that we might live this life, O oh God, fully transformed and bringing transformation wherever we go. Lord, you have not asked us to leave this place by ourselves, but you have sent your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we just pray for a greater sensitivity to your Spirit in our lives. No longer will we be afraid. No longer will we think about if others reject your word. But we're going to go and be bold as lions. For you said in your word, the righteous are as bold as lions. And so today, God, we pray for your boldness. The Bible tells us that when the Spirit of God fell amongst the apostles, they were filled with boldness and went forth and preached the gospel. Lord, we're just returning back to your original intention. We're just returning back to you and what your original desire has been for your people and for your church. Lord, we want that. And so Holy Spirit, breathe upon us. Fall afresh anew. Touch us once again your power. Let it rise to the surface of our lives. We'll be Bible believing, tongue talking, devil chasing, hands laying people to see your glory upon the earth. We know, Lord, that victory is ours. In Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us today. I pray you were strengthened and encouraged by the message. In the times in which we live, we need the Word of God to sustain and keep us. So I want to encourage you to keep on praying, stay in the Word, and trust God for every area of your life. I'll see you soon.